you doing? What are you holding there? It's just, uh, okay. Okay, how's it been going here? That's been going good. Yeah. All right, what have you been doing? Relaxing. Playing cards? Yeah, watching TV, playing cards. All right, have you talked to your mom lately? Yes. What's up with her? Mm -hmm. Doing better, she won't come home. Okay, now you remember what happened last time when I went to the court? Yeah. What's changed now? That been changed. I've been working on my anger. And me and my mom getting better. I'm gonna see my dad too. Okay, because last time your mom, I don't think, was really um, convincing that you know you could come home and she'd be able to supervise you. No, she was, but she just didn't know what to do. Now she, she got it all down packed. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk with the um, prosecutor this morning, see if we can't get a result, a plea agreement that uh, um, at least gets you out of here, all right? I'll let you know in a little while what the outcome of that is, and I'll give you my recommendation as to what I think that, uh, that we should do. But you're okay entering into some type of plea where you admit to, to one of the charges if they dismiss the other if you go home? Is that something you'd be interested in at least exploring? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'd like to wrap the whole thing up for you uh, today, if we can, rather than, you know, wait for a trial. Okay, so I'll talk with the prosecutor this morning and see if uh, we can come to some type of agreement. All right, make sure you bring it back to him. I will. Okay, Morris, hang in there. See you in a little bit. Do each of you swear that the testimony given today to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? Be seated, please. <clears throat> this is the matter, <clears throat> excuse me, of Morris Burdett, Jr. Cause number is 45 do 60803 jd 462 Let the record show that Attorney Guzik is present from the prosecutor's office. Ms. Clayton is present from the intake department. Attorney Ruck is present, the attorney representing Morris. Um, would you state your name, young man? Morris Burdett, Jr. And how old are you, Morris? I'm 16. Okay. Your name, sir? And you're his father? Yes. All right. Your name, ma'am? And you're his mother? Yes. All right. Your name, please? And Mr. Fleming is present, probation officer. We're here this morning uh, for a hearing on um, the disposition from the petition to modify uh, Morris's probation. As you recall, Morris was on probation for a criminal mischief charge, and the probation officer filed a modification because Morris was failing his uh, probation plan. Mr. Ruck, have you seen a copy of the report? I have, Judge. Mrs. Guzik, do you have a copy as well? Uh, I had a copy. I gave it to Mr. Okay. Ruck. Okay. Uh, but you were able to read it? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Um, Ruck, do you have any, well, you saw what the recommendation is. The recommendation is that Morris be placed today uh, in residential treatment. Is there anything that you would like to present to the court today? Judge, can, let me just have one second with my client. Sure. Do you understand what the recommendation is? That you be placed in like a residential placement facility, not mm -hmm. go home? Mm -hmm. Is that what you want? You want to go home, right? Mm -hmm. Judge, as was the case last time, um, we disagree with the report of the probation officer for a variety of reasons, but m most recently the, the suggestion that he um, remain outside of the care of his mother and father. Um, Morris feels, um, and we'd like to present some limited evidence today without being redundant of last time, that now, once again, it's appropriate for him to return to his mother and father. All right, call your first witness. Judge, first I would like to call um, Melissa, the service provider. Ms. Sanchez. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Melissa Sanchez. Where are you employed? South Lake Center for Mental Health. What is your occupation? Uh, wraparound coordinator for Circle Around Families. Okay. Briefly tell us about your education. I have a bachelor's in psychology from Purdue University, and I've been working for South Lake for two years. What is your relationship to Morris Burdett? I am his wrap coordinator. I visit him one to two times a week in his home. And currently his home is the detention center? The detention center. I've seen him three times since he's been detained. How did you first become involved with Morris? 
re, we received a referral um, from the court to provide home-based services, which included a home-based therapy, a mentoring, and uh, support for the family. When did you receive that initial referral? Um, in May. Of this year? Yes. When did you begin providing services? In, the, in May. What was the purpose of the home-based services that you said were being provided by your agency? Um, well, in the therapy, he was supposed to address some of his issues, his emotional issues, um, his substance abuse issues. Um, my role was to monitor that he was complying with his services, that, that the providers were coming to visit and organize a, a meeting um, to create goals for the month. Did you do that? Yes. Okay. What about the um, mentoring services that your agency monitored? Um, Morris did not meet with his mentor. I, he had one session. Morris did not want to produce or to meet with the mentor on a regular basis. Now, prior to his being detained here most recently, um, how was Morris's level of compliance with the services that you were providing? It wasn't regular, I'd say about 50%. Um, when he was there, he would open up and participate. The problem was he wasn't there half the time, so um, no long-term progress could be made. Okay, well, and isn't it true that no long-term progress could be made because you've only had the case for a very short period of time? Yes. Okay. Um, 50% compliance. Now, when you say that, do you mean he only attended half of the sessions? Yes. Okay. Do you know whether or not that was a result of transportation problems that he had? No, because all services were home-based. Okay. So we visited him in the home. So how were they scheduled? Um, he saw me on Tuesdays and Thursdays mornings um, at 9 o'clock. He saw the therapist on Thursday afternoon because um, he had family and individual, so it depended on my exact schedule, but it was usually about 4 or 5 in the afternoon. What would happen when you would go there? Um, sometimes Morris wouldn't be there. Well, most of the time Morris wouldn't be there. We'd go make a visit. I'd call mom. Mom would tell me if she knew Morris was home or not. Um, and we'd take it from there. I'd leave a card. He'd call, supposed to call me back and try to reschedule something, uh, but I didn't get calls back. Is that unusual in your profession in doing this type of uh, work to have 50% compliance? Is that something you've ever seen before? Not on this regular basis, no. Usually, um, once in a while somebody will forget, which is normal, but to miss us on a, on a regular basis, no. Okay. That's not and, very common. And so we understand how much you're talking about. What, what, how many appointments were missed? What, at 50% of what? Um, of his therapy? He had one every week, so out of a month, he would miss two or three appointments Okay. with the therapist. With me, in the beginning, he, w he was actually pretty good in the beginning. Um, in June and July, he, he would miss. And when he'd be gone, it'd be for a week at, at a time, so he would miss all appointments for the week. Um, what do you understand, ma'am, Morris's issues that you were addressing? Mm -hmm. What were they? Um, we thought he might have some kind of depression um, with the substance abuse issues. Um, he kind of avoided his problems, addressing, talking about them. Instead, he would leave, and that's kind of how he coped. He would run away and not deal with all the issues he had. So is it safe to say that, again, the reason that your agency was being involved was because of his um, history of avoiding um, certain situations, running away, looking the other way, not being there. Those were the problems that you were trying to address, correct? Right. So, in fact, his not being there was consistent with the issue that you were there to, to help him with. Right. Okay. Um, what's happened since he's been in detention? Since the, his, his detainment, um, we've kind of started making a list of what he needs to work on. Well, let's back up. You're still providing services. I Yes, I am. Okay. Are you providing the same services that we talked about before? Um, he has not had therapy, no. Okay. Why not? Um, well, initially we were waiting for Mr. Fleming's approval, and then um, once we had gotten that, um, the therapist hasn't made it out there. And when did you get that approval? Um, I think two weeks ago. Okay. So in two mm -hmm. weeks he's not been seen by a therapist? 
No. So what services have you been providing since he's been detained? Um, for me, coordination. I've seen him and we just started working on another plan in case he was to come home. Anything therapeutic or just uh, future plan? Um, he, he has started to open up. Before, I'd only get bits and pieces of, of his whole life and what's going on. So now he started to talk about some more of his drug issues and he's starting to admit, okay, yeah, I need help. Maybe I can't do this on my own. And is that, in your experience, a significant milestone in his progress? Admitting that he has these challenges that he needs to face? Yes, okay. but he needs to say it on a regular basis. I think on the second visit he said that, and then on the third one he was like, well, maybe, maybe not. How about the fourth one? The fourth one, I haven't seen him the fourth one yet. So he needs more consistency and saying on, every time I visit, okay, yes, I'm going to work on this, yes, I'm going to work on this. You said that what you've been working on is a plan for him when he's returned home, is that right? If he was to return home, yes. Okay, well is that your goal ultimately to see him return with his mother and father? Um, Don't you want to see kids at home with their parents ultimately? Yes, in, in any situation we would like for them to home to come home, and he, but he recognizes he's got a lot of different issues in a different area, so maybe a placement would be best for him to, to focus on himself instead of adding the community aspect. I guess I'm not following what you're saying. Don't, oh, don't yeah. you agree with me that, that ultimately a lot of kids have problems, mm -hmm. emotional needs, some experiment with drugs, but we want them ultimately to return home? Ultimately, yes. Okay. okay. You don't think he's ready for that yet? No. Okay. Can we talk to his parents? Yes. Okay. Has Morris tested positive for um, drugs other than the one time in July? Not by my drug screeners, okay. no. And you've been screening him regularly? On a monthly basis. Since when? Since he started services in May. Okay, so since May, he's tested positive for what, marijuana? Yes. Okay. If the probation report indicates that Morris has failed several drug tests since being on official probation, would you agree with that or disagree with that? On mine, it's only been one. Okay. That's all that I have, Judge. Mrs. Kuzak? Pardon me? That's all that I have. That she's oh. only had one, oh, okay. one dirty drug screen. Ms. Sanchez, if I understand you correctly, uh, what you were telling Mr. Ruck is at this time in Morris's life, you don't think that you can, uh, or that he's not receptive to services within his home, is that correct? If he, from what I get, his attitude's like, okay, if he's there, he'll meet with us. If, if he's not there, oh well. And you can't provide him services if he's not there. Correct. Has there been anything therapeutically that's changed with him since you went through this, this um, period where he wasn't availing himself to services? Can you there, was a, there was a period where he was not availing himself to, to services when he was finally picked up and brought here. Do you think he's made changes since I'm he's asking you therapeutically, has he made any changes? Some, but not great. Slowly, but not great progress, no. But he, the only therapeutic services he's had is talking to you, isn't right. that correct? Right. Okay. I have no further questions, Judge. Anything else, Mr. Rock? No, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Next witness. <laughs> <clears throat> Judge, before I call Morris's mother, I'm going to call Morris first. Okay. We just would like to say Morris, a few quick things. Sit up here. You can slide that way if you can. Yeah. <coughs> Tell us your name. Morris Dad Jr. How old are you, Morris? I'm 16 years old. Now, Morris, you remember some time back, we went through a detention hearing where you talked about your background, your history, and what you wanted to have happen, correct? Yes. Now, we're not going to go through all of that for today's hearing. All I want to know, Morris, is what you've learned since you've been locked up, and second, what you want to have happen today, whether you want to go home or whether you want to have what the probation department's recommending, that you'll be sent off to uh, placement. What I learned here today, well, when I learned since I've been detained, well, I know how to control my anger. And then 
I would like to go home with my family. Now, how did you learn how to control your anger? Because I, I wouldn't be, I'd be in my cell most of the time reading the Bible or the Watchtower, just trying not to get mad and try to, like, not build my anger up. I'd let it out sometimes. I'd probably would cry. Sometimes I'd probably would cry, but I'd let it out instead of holding it in. So you don't yeah. let it build up? Yeah, instead of letting it build up. Now, we heard testimony today that you were non-compliant or partially compliant with the people who were trying to help you. You understand why that is a concern for everybody? Uh, what you mean, compliant? Well, that you were only at half the appointments that were made for you. Most of the appointments, she would come early in the morning and I'd be asleep. Sometimes we don't even hear the door knock, the doorbell ring. I'd be downstairs. Sometimes I'll, I'll mostly be home. Okay, well, the testimony was you missed about half the appointments. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I did miss half of them. You, you agree with that? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you understand, Morris, that the services that they're attempting to provide are to help you? Yes, I know. Are you willing to, um, moving forward, fully comply? Can you tell the court that you're gonna fully comply with all the services that are being offered to help you? Yes, I will. I will fully comply. Testimony was also that um, they were working with your mother to try and get your mother to help you. Was she telling you, you know, that you need to go to these services and participate in the help that was being offered to you? Yes. Okay, were you listening to her at the time? Yes, I was listening, but I was just being hard headed. Okay. Well, what's going to happen in the future? I think we're going to get through this. I'm going to do better. And I think it's going to work out if I go home. And can the court and can your mother believe you right now when you're saying that? Yes, me and my father. Can you look them in the eye and tell them that, that you're going to fully comply with everything? I'm going to fully comply. I am. I'm going to do better. I'm trying to change my life. I don't want to be angry. I don't be angry for fun. I, I got a problem. I admit it. What's your problem? I have an anger problem. That's all I have, Judge. Mrs. Guzik, anything? Morris, you said you couldn't um, mm -hmm. go to your therapy appointments because the therapist came when you were sleeping. She came too early, or he came too early. What part of your smoking marijuana did, played into that? No, I don't, I don't, I'm supposed to smoke in the morning. I don't smoke in the morning time. Well, when do you smoke? Probably, to tell you the truth, probably around in the afternoon. And that doesn't stay in your system and affect you? What you mean? I stay in my system. Well, and when I, you smoke marijuana, it stays in your system. Yeah. Doesn't that affect you and your ability to get up in the morning? No, it don't, ma'am. Well, why couldn't you get up and meet with your therapist then? Because she would come early and she says she would not. But I, I believe that she not. But I didn't hear it. And I got people living upstairs, too. They didn't hear it either. OK, well, how did, prevent, how did your running away from home in July until mid-August prevent you from meeting with your therapist? I didn't run away. Where were you? I would come back at night. I would just let my mom breathe. So she's like, if me and my mom don't see each other. So your mom I, knew where you were at? No, she didn't know where I was at. She so you were a runaway? Well, she probably think her boyfriend see me, my sister see me. I would come home, and I would spend the night downstairs. She wouldn't even know it. You're telling me people in your house knew you were sleeping in that house at night? When, when there was a runaway report out for you? Is that what you're telling yeah. me? Yeah. And they didn't tell your mother you were in the house? They told her, but she you ain't never seen You said it. enough. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Rock? <clears throat> Morris, if you go home, are you going to stay home? I promise I'm going to stay home. You've learned from this, haven't you? I learned from my mistakes. Okay. You know you've got a problem. You got a problem with marijuana, right? Yes. You've got a problem with anger? Yes. You understand that your non-compliance has led you to be locked up for several weeks now? Yes. And that if you don't comply, this is going to happen again? I know that's what I'm trying to do better. I'm that's trying. all. I, I just want you to explain to me what you started to tell Mrs. Guzik. You were gone for, what, six weeks? Four weeks? How long were you gone? Probably like three or four weeks. OK, so now what were you doing? You were sleeping at home at night? Well, yeah, I'll come and see. But like, it's mostly time I come, she'll never be there. 
So who did you come to see? My sisters, her boyfriend, my brothers. So you were mad at your mom? You didn't want? No, her? I wasn't mad. I just know we acted like and. You and just wanted to do what? I just wanted her to get her time and I get my time. Let her breathe and let me breathe. Breathe who? Like I said, let her like have her. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what you're trying to get at. Like, Why did you want her to have her time to do what? Like to to focus and calm down. Like calm so, down about what? Because if we each, if we see each other like back when I was having like control my anger, we would argue, okay. and that's why I would leave because I don't want to argue with my mom all the time. I see. And I would leave. So and you were sort of afraid to see her because you didn't want to argue. Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So every night you came home and slept in the house. Not, yeah, but well, mostly every night. But mostly every night. Some yeah. nights you didn't. Yes. So where'd you sleep when you didn't come home? I would be over this girl, this girl house on 61st. Right Is that your girlfriend? Street. No. Just some girl you know? And yes. So during that period of time, you didn't get any services, right? Because you were dodging your mother. Well, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. Where do you get money for marijuana? I don't even buy the marijuana. You people, don't buy it? Yeah, the people I know, they just have it. Who just has it? Just your friends? Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a kid in court that ever admitted he buys marijuana. Just everybody's got these great uh, friends that just I, give I you all the before, marijuana you want. I bought it before, I'm not going to lie, but when you have friends, you, you don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah, Those I, aren't very good friends. I know, that's why I'm putting that to the side. I'm from the start, I'm from the grow up. Mm -hmm. All right, Morris, you can have a seat next to your attorney, okay? <coughs> Mr. Ruck, who else? Mom, Judge. All right. Cross your fingers. Tell us your name. Angel Mosley. Mosley, what's your relationship with Morris? I'm his mother. You've been in court today now for the second time hearing the issue of whether or not Morris should come home with you or not. Yep. You've heard the testimony. Uh, you've heard the testimony today, and uh, Morris's father is here this time, correct? Correct. And he wasn't here last time? No, he wasn't. Okay. Does uh, Morris's father live with you? No. What's the relationship between Morris's father and uh, his son? Oh, they have a pretty good, decent relationship. Okay. Um, do they see each other on a regular basis? Yes. Okay. Um, Ma'am, you've heard your son today. I know last time you had questions about what was in his best interest. Um, you've heard your son today talk to you directly about changes that he anticipates making um, with his level of compliance with your authority and with the authority of the service providers that are there to help him. What are your thoughts on that? I think he has good intentions. I really do. Is that a change from what uh, we saw a few months ago? Yes, I see a change. Okay, how so? Um, I see a couple of changes, actually. Uh, he didn't used to speak his feelings. Everything, his answer to everything was, we didn't understand. You, you just don't understand. Um, he didn't want to try. Everything was negative or it's not going to work. Nothing was going to work, you know. He never could specify exactly what the problem was. And now he, I, I see a change. He's admitting the problem? Yes. He's admitting it himself? He always admitted that he needed help, but he never said exactly what it was. He always said that he had an anger problem from day one. He always said that. So in the past, he would just blame things on his anger problem as opposed right. to seeking help. Exactly. Okay. Now, if the court were to release him today not to formal placement, but to your house, would you be uh, willing to have him come home with you? Always willing. Yes, <coughs> always willing. Now, there was some testimony from Morris about him staying at the house still while he was on runaway. Are you aware of that? Um, I found out later when I spoke to my daughter that he was coming there getting clothes. Uh, when I was at work, he would uh, get clothes and he would leave before I would get home from work or they would see him. Um, I had heard that he was staying at a, uh, 
young lady's house. Uh, it's his friend's girlfriend that he was staying there. I would go there, wouldn't catch him. Um, but I had heard that, you know, he was in the neighborhood, but I, you know, just would never catch And he might have been there. Maybe they probably would lie to me. But yes, I have heard. Okay. Now, before we came into court today, um, I asked you, invited you um, to, because um, you seemed a little bit hesitant about what you thought was best for Morris. And I asked you to speak from your heart and just tell us what you think you'd like to see happen. Okay. Um, I'd like to see my son um, continue to progress, but also to get the help that is needed. Um, I didn't want him to go to placement because I want to be with my child. But I do think that it could help. I don't want him to come home and if he's on the uh, extensive probation and doesn't get the phone or what have you, then that's a violation. I would rather see him go through and, and be done with the program. Um, when I first learned of placement, I, you know, it was always brought to me as, you know, far away. And as I felt like that wouldn't help, especially considering we needed family uh, counseling, you know, and I would prefer for my family to stay together. He hasn't seen his brothers and sisters, you know, since he's been here, they're underage, not allowed to visit. It has been a strain. He's only made, uh, I believe, one phone call home, you know, and it, it, it's just been a strain, you know. So, um, I guess my question is then, what do you want to see happen today? Um, what I want to see happen probably isn't the best thing for him. I, will, I want to see him come home, but I don't think he's ready just yet. I don't want him to get home and it be a violation of probation by someone not answering the phone or what have you. Um, with schooling, if, if, you know, when he goes in the placement, if there is, a, you know, schooling, I would like to see some progress that way, then I'll know, you know, that he is on the right track. I don't want him to come home to those same circle of friends, and I know he'll do okay for a couple of weeks. I know that he will, but I don't want to take that chance. I go to work that one day, and I call home and he's not there, or he get that violation of someone not answering the other end. You know, it's four teenagers, he and his siblings. Then I know, you know, he's going to Department of Correction. I don't want to see my child go through that. Team on. What do you want to ask? Judge, can Morris address his mother? You wanted to address her. I don't know if that's a permitted or not. The other. No, not, not okay. Alone. Okay, then. Because well, it, it's not up to his mom; it's up to me. True. So he can address me when the time is right. That's fine. Okay, Thank you. Okay. I have no other questions, then, Judge. Mrs. Guzik. Judge. Thank you. Okay. Any other witnesses? I don't think so, Judge. Let me just confirm. You're not in a position where you can take Morris home with you, right? No. So if I asked you, uh, you don't live with her, so you're not. You agree with what mom said? Okay, he needs help. Your son needs help. He needs, he needs to get help. Okay, all right. No other witnesses, Judge. Thank you. Mrs. Guzik, do you have any witnesses or did you want to hear from the probation officer? Yes, I'd like Mr. Fleming. <coughs> you could do that. Mr. Fleming. Mr. Fleming, you're a probation officer with the Lake Superior Court Juvenile Division, is that correct? Yes, I am. And how long have you been a probation officer? 11 years. Is uh, Morris Burdett one of the juveniles assigned to your caseload? Yes, he is. And how long has he been assigned to you? Uh, he was placed on probation April of this, of this year. That's uh, been four months now. Okay. And has um, probation, or have probation services been successful with Morris? No, they haven't. Okay. Was Morris always available to meet with you when you wanted to meet with him? Yes, he was when, when I wanted to meet with him. I had his father bring him to my office on one occasion for a drug test. And uh, most of the time I would see him at school 
when school was in. But okay. And then he ran away, and I didn't see him when I checked by the house, and I checked on him. Oh, so the, during that period, he was on runaway status. You did want to meet with him, but he yes, wasn't available. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. How long was he on runaway status? Uh, since June the 3rd, and uh, he was picked up in August. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, June the 3rd is when I modified, since July the 23rd, and he was picked up in August. And he was not receiving any probation services during that no, period? No, he wasn't. Okay. As part of probation, though, the court attempted to provide services yes, for Yes, we did. And it was Morris's actions that prevented the provision of those services? That's right. Okay. Has he tested positive for marijuana any time uh, in the last few months that you know of? Uh, yes, he tested positive with uh, Circle Round family when they drug tested him, and then he tested positive uh, with the probation department uh, in, in May, the earlier part of May. And thirdly, he tested positive when he was uh, arrested. They sent him to the hospital for a drug test. Uh, the, at the time he was arrested, he tested positive. Now, when you say arrested, do you mean picked up on the runaway? Picked up on the runaway okay. and the bench warrant. He so was that picked was in up August? on our bench warrant, yes. Okay. That was in August. So not only was he not availing himself to probation services, he was using marijuana? Yes, he was. What recommendation are you making to the court regarding disposition on today's date? Well, this matter was staffed by our placement team on August 18th. And we uh, recommended that he be placed at Glen Mills in Pennsylvania. We also sent a package to uh, Jabalt in Terre Haute, Indiana, and to Campania Academy in Cherville. We've heard from Glen Mills and Campania. Glen Mills uh, declined uh, due to, they state, his lack of motivation when they interviewed him. And Campania has accepted him in their program. Do you feel at this point in Morris's life uh, he would avail himself to less restrictive types of placement, such as in the home on intensive probation? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. And why is that? Uh, dealing with Morris in the past, Morris, uh, unless he's made these changes that he says he's made and, and uh, done this soul searching that he said he, he's done, but uh, his behavior in the past is that uh, when he feels uh, he wants to do something, Morris will do that. Uh, there's been occasions like when I filed a modification in June that he just, and I believe the, the, the caseworker was there, he just walked out of the house and stayed gone for three days. Uh, then in July, when he had a court date scheduled for July the 24th, uh, he just felt that he was going to be sent to a placement, which we were making a recommendation at that point in time for intensive probation, uh, he decided that he was not coming to court. And he did, he never voluntarily came in. He was picked up uh, by the Maryville Police Department uh, three weeks later or so and brought in. And he has these, uh, I would say, uh, he, he fixes his mind on things and, and he does what he wants to do at times. I have no further questions for Mr. Fleming. Mr. Rock. Sir, isn't it true that during the times that you went there early on to deal with Morris that you threatened him with placement? If he was not compliant, you would hang that over his head and say, you're going to be placed if you don't do this? No, I don't recall threatening any kid. I've been doing this for 11 years. That's not what we do. Uh, I, I would talk to him about alternatives uh, for noncompliance, but I've never threatened him for anything. Sir, you said in your testimony that you recommend placement outside of the home at, at uh, one of the two facilities you talked about. You said unless he's made the changes that he said he's made. Is that, was that correct? Yes. Well, let's assume for a second he has made the changes that he testified he made. What would your recommendation be then? It would be intensive probation. It would have to be something that would be a, a above the, the status that he's, he's on now with the court. I'll be more specific with what that would be ankle bracelet is it uh, in his in his situation I would ask for intensive level two that well, would be the ankle bracelet yes with then restrictions on 
when he can leave the home? Yes, they, they, it's a separate department, and he would have to follow their rules and regulations, yes. And if he's given an ankle bracelet, would that alert somebody if he uh, left the house? Well, it would only alert them if they came by with a mobile unit. It would not be like electronic home monitoring that would alert them immediately. No, it, it, it wouldn't be that kind of alert. Is that an option, electronic home monitoring, or is that not an option? Uh, it would be up to the judge, but with intensive probation, we only have level one and level two, and that would be our monitors. So your recommendation, if Morris is being honest with us in court today, would be that the same services that are being offered continue with him on level two intensive probation. Yes, that's, that, that would be my recommendation. Uh, and that was my recommendation back in July. But since then, uh, no, I, I, I'm not uh, stressing that recommendation. No. So basically, your recommendation is dependent on whether or not the court believes that Morris was truthful. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Or sincere, I should sincere, say. Sincere. Yeah. Sincere. Okay. I have my doubts. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. Mr. Ruck, anything else? Nothing, nothing else, Judge. Any other comments that you might want to make at this time before I make a decision? Uh, you know, it, it's always difficult to be um, running so steeply uphill against uh, the testimony and recommendations of um, a variety of people. Um, and I certainly understand that and can uh, recognize the hesitation that the court would likely have in returning him home today. Um, but all I would say, Judge, is that being locked up, sitting here, does something, and I believe it has for Morris. And we're not saying release him out in the street to go on about his life. But I think we're suggesting what Morris is suggesting, send him home to his mother, put severe and significant restrictions on him, and monitor those, and monitor those. Let the service providers continue to do what was ordered just a few months ago. And I think the important thing to remember, judges, and I stated this last time, is that Morris's issue is that he runs from his problems. That is the problem that is, is, is attempting to be addressed. And from what I've heard today, there still has not been the opportunity, even since he's been in placement, for that issue really to be um, flushed out. Now, on one hand, the court could say, well, then we need to send him off to you know, um, formal placement to accomplish that, I would suggest that we move in increments. We move in increments from where he was before with no real restrictions, just you need to do what we're telling you you're going to do, to now we're going to put a bracelet around your ankle and make sure that you're doing what we say you're going to do. Before we jump to the most severe conclusion, the recommendation that he be shipped off to Pennsylvania or Terre Haute or even um, locally, away from his family and his brothers and sisters who he hasn't seen in a very long time. So I, I would just ask that the court give some credence to what he said in the stand today. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Guzik, anything? Judge, we've heard that Morris has done some soul searching while he's been detained for the last three weeks and apparently has seen the light. I'm not sure what light it is he's seen. Uh, what I've heard is a person that's still not taking responsibility for anything that he does. If he doesn't go to therapy, it's because the therapist comes too early. If he smokes marijuana, it's because, gee, his friends give him marijuana to smoke. If he leaves home without permission, it's because mom needs to cool off. Morris isn't responsible for anything. It's everybody else's fault. The court tried to put services into the home. All Morris had to do was open the door, and he couldn't even do that. Uh, intensive probation is not going to make Morris open the door. It's not going to make Morris be there to open the door. All the monitor does is let this court know if Morris isn't there. And guess what? We know that anyway, because mom reports it. He's not going to get services unless this court takes him and puts him in a place where he can receive services, and he desperately needs services. I think that uh, probation's recommendation for placement should be followed. Thank you. Well, <laughs> it w this is a difficult uh, case for me for a lot of reasons, not the least of which it seems like Oftentimes we have cases where the parents are either not involved or minimally involved or they're there but really don't care. And wow, when I think about the look of mom's face when she walked in and saw her son, it was just very heartwarming. You know, you could just tell she loves him so much. And so for that, I think that this is a mom too. I remember from the last hearing, she said, I'm always willing, you know, always willing. And, and that's to me the sign of a really great mother. Uh, but at the same time, she, 
acknowledges and admits that maybe he's not ready to come home, which I know has to be heartbreaking for you to say to this court, especially in front of your son. Um, and so I have to really you know, give that a lot of um, credibility and weight. Uh, I think that Morris is a child that can really be helped in our system. Um, I think he right now thinks that he's, he's gotten to the point where he's going to change his life. Um, but I think that he might need a little bit more help from us. Um, I look that you know he's 16 and he's just finished, I'm not certain even if he's finished the ninth grade, which is, it, he hasn't. OK, she's shaking her head no, um, which doesn't say a lot for what, the age, what he would do if he was at home educationally. Um, we also have services that were placed in the home, and Morris didn't get up to be there. Even though he was there, he wasn't there to, to receive the services because he was in bed. Uh, we have a young man who's uh, abusing you know, drugs. And, um, and so I think that uh, he needs a little bit more intervention than a, 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 an ankle monitor to make sure that he is where he is. We can, we can assure that, but we need to make sure that up here, and in here, he's ready um, to do the work that he needs to do. I mean, we've got a young man who's punching holes in the wall. We've got a young man who left home for four or five or six weeks and would, you know, to avoid his mother because he knew there would be a conflict. Um, and so that worries me that he's going to put himself in a situation that's going to become dangerous for him. Um, so for all of those reasons today, the court is going to order that, um, make this child a ward of the court in order that he be uh, placed at Campania Academy. The court will order that he avail himself to the services there, counseling, drug testing, and of course that he be educated. And I'll order that his family participate in family counseling along with him uh, so that he can return home um, sooner than later. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, it, it's, it's, it's individual, you know, so it depends on, it's, it's fact sensitive, so it'll depend on Morris's um, achievements and the different um, categories that they'll set for him, how he'll do in school. So there'll be a lot of factors that will come into play. But on average, it's about nine months, which is usually about one school year. There are kids that complete the program sooner, and there are those that stay longer. So hopefully that he'll fall into that average category. But it's right here in Cherville. You'll get to visit with him and participate in counseling. And then as the kids um, improve in the program, they have weekend passes and things of that nature, too. So he will be able to come home at times once he's earned that right to come home. Do you have any questions? Anyone? What? No, you're going off to the Campania Academy. They're going to Mr. Ruck, anything else? No, I just explained to him what's Ms. happening. Ms. Mosley? Um, when do they transfer? It'll be today. It will be, OK. Mm -hmm. He'll be It'll out be here today. today. OK. All right. Then this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. Say goodbye to your parents. Um, I feel I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I know that there is a problem, and I just don't want him to, although I want him to come home, I don't want him to come home too soon, and then he, we find ourselves back here again, and it'd be a much worse situation. How hard is it? Well, go ahead. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully the time that he's in there, you know, he step up, step up, you know, be able involved to come in his education, get his emotion under his belt, you know, get angled as quick, learn to control, you know, that's a real key issue. No one feels like you do. No one. I mean, the judge, they see so many kids, but for your own personal child, no one feels like you do. When they leave or go off, it's a parent's, it's a worst nightmare. But to know that they need help and to try to get them some help, that's the first step to recovery, I think. So hang in there. Well, at least I'm getting out of hell. And then be in school, get my GED, work on my anger, and be all right. It seems like it's kind of the best of both worlds. I mean, you're going to be close to your family, plus you'll get the services. How do you feel about the placement that you yeah, got? I heard about it. They say it's nice. They say it ain't that bad. I'm just going to go do my time, go home, do you think get the, it over with. Do you think the court acted in your best interest today, or? I don't know. They probably did. I did, they did. Mm.
You had originally, you know, you missed that hearing because you were afraid of getting placed in Arizona. Yeah, because um, my PO, he told me if I don't, he told me if I go, I'm going to get two years of placement. And that's what he said. And then he tried to deny it when he asked him last court day. So he just, he just told the story. I don't care. I'm just going to go to placement, prove to him that I can do better, and he going to feel better. So you got something to prove? Yeah, I got a lot of proof. Mm-hmm.